Hello everyone and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So last week we cut out a bow blank doing the circle cut jig for our trivet. This week we're going to use that bow blank to turn our button box. So I promised you that we got. So what's our button box? This little thing on here. We'll get you a zoom in in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to do that. It's got, why do you think it's called a button box? Um, it's got that shape there. Now you could use this as a pot potpourri bowl. Had another interesting suggestion from one of the guys that worked in here. He said, if you could put like a, a sponge inside, a bit of foam, right? yeah, a bit of cover over it, it'd make a great pin cushion that you could put your pins through. Right? That's a nice idea. I like that. So here we've got a little bowl, button shaped lid. Got a piece of ash, a bit of oak. You can use whatever you like. So our bowl blank, as we cut last week, about five inch diameter. Lid, 10 mil thick. Combining measurements again here. It's getting good now, okay? So we've got 125 mil for the bowl and 10 mil thick for your lid, okay? Two different bits. Oh, a bit for a lid. Just bear with us. I'm taking out a thin plank, All right? So something you might have lying around, you can machine it down to 10 mil will save you a lot of time. So having machined it, we can then do the aspect of this bit. And we're going to have a look, I think, on camera three. We've got stuff doing the camera work and stuff this afternoon. So she's in here. That's the little bit I've cut it out. I've marked corner to corner before I cut the bits off. I found the middle. I think you can probably see it, look. I've measured out a diameter. What's the diameter? Well, that related to this bit. So this bit I've turned on the chuck beforehand. So literally, I've actually put the chuck onto the lathe. Like we got it now. Closed the jaws right up. I bought the tail stock up. I turned it to a cylinder. Diameter circle so it'll fit straight into the chuck jaws. Okay, so I've made that fit on a chuck jaws. So I've actually used the chuck as a drive method with the tail stock putting pressure. The idea is this will fit straight in. Okay, gonna save a bit of time. Then what did I do with it? We set about the measurement marks. You can see those little lines where my fingertips are. I used some super glue, put it on, stuck it. So at this stage, you get this. Okay, so stuck on, nicely secured. That just speeds it up immensely. Problem with this, you can't go putting any screws in it. No screw chucks, no jam chucks. It's it like, what can I do? So can we glue something on? That means I can go straight into here. Okay. Now, if you accurately do that, when you switch your lathe on, in fact, you've got machine thickness surface, should run nice and true. So that's good. Next thing then. Get to there, we're just setting things up to wash wise. Check where we are, it clears nicely. Glasses, we need those. First thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna take it down to a straight cylinder in reality, clean it up. Take the speed up 15, 1600. Handle down low, we're just resting the bubble. I can roll the flutes on about two o'clock now, so I find my cut angle. Just gently come across. Don't want to engage this too hard at this stage. If it's quite thin in section, we we'll take a chunk off the side if we're not careful. Still not quite round, and touch up on the top. Shavings aren't continuous yet. So a bit of wood for this, we've got a bit of oak. Water saw and stuff, just about down to our cylinder. A little bit more. Just have a quick look. Probably going to come down a little bit more, because I want to check with our bowl blank we cut out last week, we drilled a hole in the middle, we go for that in a sec. That's not bad, that's a good size. So we're down to clean diameter. Just got to turn a little bit, I want there. That's good. Now we're gonna come round, tackle the front. What do we want on our front at the moment? Ignoring the holes, we've got to do our button shape. Bit domed in the centre, coming back, do this bead bit round the edge. The bead, probably about 10 to 12 mil wide. Uh, we can rest on, up with the handle. Gently come in. And we haven't come all the way to the middle. We need to come fractionally down with that robust rest. So I can hit the center, that's better. Gently come along. Just blending that together. Don't go too deep with this. Slowly looking on the far side of where I'm coming in. That looks good. Now we're going to round this. So again, just rest in the bevel. Take our button tight edge. 
กฎกาเรียกไวเฮสเตอร์อะไรก็ได้ bring this back so I want to get as much of this bead shape done as I can at this stage so I'm going to change to my skew going to hold it finger and thumb going to shear straight just to refine that in a little bit drawing line in the middle there going to turn it over bring that together Fingertips feeling what's going on. I've got slight contour change near the middle. That's got that. And then we're back out, right out to here. Now I've got to come the far side, chuck edge to there. Just going to take this corner off. This is a bit of a lazy way of getting in here, but limited access. We can't get in too close to the gouge. Bring that round. And again, just really building the shape, trying to be nice and light with this. Get our contour flowing. Just that last little bit. Okay, good. So we've got our bead edge. Our curve in here. We've got a bead all the way around. So up to there. Right, we're going to sand it. So I've got to throw the extractor on. Put that on there. Got our grade, so it's a 150. I'm gonna fold it. I'll take the speed down. A little bit slower, last heat. Left hand's working. Do that feed shape. We're gonna get as far as we can. looks quick feel well, 150 done 240 so the first one the 150 done all the hard work we'll be more careful with this probably it's a bit of cross grain stuff so base plate material and reality so I need to check those end grain fibers that we're getting a quick look should be good though Paying attention down there. Nothing in the middle, but a slight direction change still. Let's just pull over that. I think I've been right up to the middle. But that visual looks important. So, 400. Turn the arrow. Just trying to get okay stuff. Give us a sec. All right. Just going to burnish that. That's done while we find the same shadings. Okay, right. Steph's got questions. So what have you got? So they just wanted to know what about what bowl gouge you were using at the beginning. And the bowl gouge I'm using a. Ooh, let's have a quarter. Three apes. Okay. Have to think of the size, so it's a three eighths, about 9.5 mil fingernail grind. Um, in between Christmas and New Year, we've got a video we've just done. We had to pre record it because I'm not here. Okay, I've shown you how you can sharpen this from a new gouge to that shape freehand and then also with a jig. So, if you want to know how you can alter that gouge, get it to that shape, that would be the perfect opportunity. All right, so it's on that video, but three eight bow gouge. So, got a Oh, almost button shape. Doesn't look like a button at this side. Yeah, it's like, yeah, okay. So we're going to take this out. Let's just have a, okay. Up to there. That. The back of it, we've still got this thing. We're going to lose it in a minute. Okay. That's what we glued on to hold it. We've got as far around as we can with our bead. 
That's quite nice. You got our shape. Okay, good. So we're just going to put it out of the way for a second. We've now got to do the base. So screw chuck. All right, we do our screw C that fits into there in the C jaws. A couple of bits of plywood to act as a spacer. So we don't need such a long screw. So you can't adjust the screw on my screw chucks, but you can actually add equal spaces, plywood's an equal thickness. So hopefully we can screw that on. My original plan for this was to use the O'Donnell jaws and drill a hole and expand it in. So why didn't I? It means another set of chuck jaws. Okay, so it means moving things about more. So I thought we'll try and go with one set. Okay, oh, bowl, not too bad. Just checking where things run speed wise. We're coming up back to that same gauge, three oaks. We can rest on the tall rack. Now, the flute is directly facing me, if you almost like. Um, I've got the bowl gauge angled across my body, the handle's down on my right hip. I'm facing the leg directly. If I roll it, so what I'm doing, this bit around my right hand, my wrist, turn it over, find that cut area, come across. Come off, back it round, forward. And if I take it off the rest, I'll go back to that thing. So it's quite basic stuff for some of you. Some of you are going to be new to this. Again, we just want to get this round. Lovely. That's good. So what we've got on here, this is a bit of brown oak that we cut out, like we said last week on that trivet video. It will give a contrast between the piece of oak we've got that we've done the button want to find the middle so the easiest way now we can switch the lab on i've set the dividers out for the diameter of the c jaws internal grip okay so we've just done a scribe line which gives me a good guide of where things are bow gals down low we're using left hand wing in reality doing a pull cut just taking that bolt out First few cuts trying to be nice and delicate because I don't want to drag in and damage that line we've created. We need that to hold in a minute. Now we're going to start our shape. We can do the same technique. We're not resting the bevel for this. We're dragging it along. Again, taking the bolt out. Coming up round, starting to build our shape. Want to clean up that little foot bit. So I'm going to go parting tool just for a second. Just want to get a parallel cut on here. If you have a set of dovetail jaws, you'll need to create a slight dovetail. The C jaws we've got have that little lip. Changing now just down to a smaller quarter inch bow gouge. Just so I can get right into there. I can drop the handle down. I want to rest the bevel as much as I can here. So change direction a little bit, come back in. That's good. We can rest the bevel up with the handle. We're going to drive this round now. So the flute about 10 o'clock. Drive the tip along. Nice and slow. Right hand's got to come in. Into my body so we continue our curve. Come up round. Do a little bit more just up there so i brought the tool rest round a bit add a bit more support we've got in reality gentle curb bowl shape the foot is going to come off later so i'm trying to think about where that's going to continue in i think i'm going to vandalize it now i'm going to go against the grain a little bit i want to take a bit of bulk off just in there now I've gone, in reality, the wrong way. I've gone from larger to smaller. I get a colour variation. It looks whiter here, darker here. I don't know if you can probably see that. But if you can see, it's fantastic. I've bent the fibres over here a little bit. There's no support. This is grain fibres. So as they're shorter due to the diameter, they fold over. That's why we're getting the white. If I actually support them and cut going into them, there we go from smaller to larger. We can bring this round. All the way up there. Blend that in. Nice light cut. We should get more equal colour. Looks better. Good. 
So we need to sound that bit. So let's go to our abrasive, if we took the air back on. 240, 150, where are we? That's the one. Ooh, that, that. Okay. We've moved banjo out the way to get us more access. One fifty grit. I think I do all the work. Put our shake together. Two forty. I'll have a quick look. Looks good. 400. So, some cellulose sand in sailor. So uh, this will bring the colour out. Wow. So at this stage, we're just going to seal it. Just going to wipe the off step. What have you got? Firstly, I want to say it's a beautiful bit of wood. It looks it's pretty, isn't it? Gorgeous. It's lovely. Okay. It really is. Um, Frederick has asked, um, does brown oak and normal oak come from the same tree? Yep. Okay. Brown oak and normal oak come from the same tree. It's as simple as that as a, as a comment. Now, why do I go, kind of go, yeah. Now, what's the difference then? How do you get that to that? Can you see, look at the color change, okay? This is a tree would have been attacked by a fungus. Um, if you were going out and you're walking around the woods and you see a fungus around the bottom of the log and it's running, I've got to think about this, horizontal not vertical, it'll be at the base of the tree, and it's a brownie colour, it's what's known as a beefsteak fungus. And Yeah, okay, I'm not making this up, right? It is called a beefsteak fungus, okay? It will take enough nutrients out of the tree to survive, but in doing so, it injects a dye. That causes the terrific brown staining. It will also damage the timber or the tree after a number of years. So actually, it can take the structural strength out of the tree. It will cause internal rot. So getting it at the right stage can be quite important. Finding them at the right stage can be difficult. All right, so quite a rarity, but terrific colour. Okay, so yes, it's basically a standard oak tree, but, and the problem is, until you've cut it down, you don't know how good the brown is. And if it's not good enough, you can't put it back. Okay, now I just want to clean up that little stuff I've got on there. Just to make sure it's nice and round and clean. It's not very long. I've given myself a short little bit to hold. Ugh. Didn't want to undo the chuck, so okay. I've wound it on the screw chuck nicely. Let's give myself something then to push against instead of the chuck coming off. There you go. Wind it on. So I put the chuck key in, resting on the tour rest. Get to there. Now, need to do something. Do we do need to do it now? Let's have a think. Now we'll do it in a minute with our button. Got to think of procedure for this, you know. Oh, I'll put this back in. So I've turned it around. Let's have a quick look. Check it runs true. Not bad. Tighten it up. Okay, good. Now we need to hollow this. Let's have a quick look on our button, make sure we've got oh, just enough. So bow gouge again. We can do either. I've gone slightly larger for a minute. We're going to start in the middle. We've got that whole finger and thumb flute over about two o'clock. Taking the bulk out. Just 
gently pulling round. Cuts are getting longer. Okay, so we're taking a bit of the bulk out. We've got, which I don't know if you already see at the moment, I've got a couple of steps inside. I've left the bulk in the bottom, so it's thicker here. Wall thickness is thinner. We've got to level the top. So let's do the top bit first, so I can rust the bubble. All right, so I can come over there. Oh, that's my cut. My left thumb now going to push across. So I'm eager it round the toe rest for this. Am I? And down here, that there, I think we've covered this with you a few times. The right way of pushing the tip along. That looks good. Level this off, get it flat. Next stage, we need to start to fit our button. So whilst I've got a bit of bulk in the bottom, it's had a bit, it's a bit more strength whilst we do this bit. I'm going to change smaller gouge. A bit more controllable, a bit lighter. And I'm going to do almost a straight cut. And I'm thinking about how deep I need to go. At this stage, I can hold the button upside down. Grip on that chuck spigot we made. We need this to fit in. I might need to go a little bit deeper, but until we get the front in, I can't check that. So, a little bit of patience. Bit of start, stop. Nearly just starting to go. I'm going to quick feel with my fingers, see what's happening in here. Okay, that's good. We want a bit of rattle. We could possibly go just a little bit deeper. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, now I'm going to cheat a little bit. What am I going to do? There's one little thing that I want to do for later. And this is why I ummed and before I put this in. Okay, so you're watching this, aren't you? We're going to just take this off. I've forgotten one minor thing we're going to need later. And it's minor. Luckily, I've got a spare chuck. You can never have enough chuck chucks. Okay. I'm not sure how many wood, how many chucks a woodchuck a chucker needs, but okay. <laughs> All right, Steph's in here like, laughing now. I'm in trouble now. Okay. Now, what do we need to do? We need to mark out four equal spacings. Okay. So I've got a little bit of masking tape. And this we could have done before we take it off. Now, I'm going to put them in line with where the gap is on the chuck jaw. You don't have to use masking tape. You could draw on the timber. But I thought it makes it harder for you guys to see it as well if I just draw on the wood. So by putting a little bit of tape on here, we can mark those. Okay, and I'm sorry I jumped this stage a little bit. We need something now to drop into the chuck jaws. So I've got my skew. How about that? Down to there. Go careful, I've got the sharp hand out now. Okay. We need a pencil line. One, bring it round one. There. Yeah. Come on there. Okay. So that we should have done when we did that first stage. All right. So in being able to change, you get, what if I bring it in? Four spacings, four little pencil lines. All right. Real easy to do. Right. You, Jason, are full of lots of neat little tricks. <laughs> I will say I was panicking then that there might not be another chuck there with a set of sea jaws in and we're trying to figure out how we we're going to do it. So it's just lucky, isn't it? The, okay. All right, good. Because at this stage, we know this will fit into here. We've got a little bit of play. We'll do that in a second. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. Got a little bit more to do as well. Now, what I'm looking at this stage, I want my button to fit in a bit deeper comes out a little bit high, bring it down, 
So I need a little bit of that lip inside. Should be good. So I've taken just off the bottom edge. And check our button fits in there. Where does it fit to? That's not bad. Now I'm going to use, and we could do this a number of ways. All right, I'm bouncing ideas of how you could hold this. Actually, I could do the button on something else later. But some of you can go, oh, okay, could we do the old-fashioned way? I used to reverse bowls and things, a bit of cotton cloth. Push it in. Okay. Take the light speed down because you're going to get a whirlwind off that excess. Okay. Push them in there. Nearly. Still got a tight bit somewhere. Okay, that's better. So the bit of cotton cloth will work. Just to the grip chuck. I can bring it up gently, clean the dust off the light pad. Now we want to take off that little spigot that we glued on. Nice and gently dragging this out. Juicing the bulb down. Not trying to be too heavy handed. Nearly there. Let's have a quick look. Got a little bit in there, but high spot that side. So just lightly clean that up. Cut and cross it in my hand. It actually doesn't hurt. That's good. Okay, so we've skimmed the back. We need to sand that to blend it in. So 150, 240, 400. All right. So drop the speed down a little bit again. Just sanding out, blending into what we've got. Two, four. We'll have a quick look and a feel. Oh, it's good. 400. All right, so we've taken that off the back. We've now got to get back out. Okay. That's good and easy. We know this will fit in. I don't want to go pushing it in or I'm going to get stuck now. A little bit sand in there will be good. So let's go back to our bowl shape. So our bowl gouge. Give it a Fingertips, what's going on? Uh, holding on there. Trying to get our thickness nice and equal down through. That's not bad. Going to change the grip to a little bit overhand. Flutes come up a little bit. At one o'clock. Slide down the centre so we don't fly across. Have a quick feel what's going on. Getting thicker in the bottom. We've got the lip in here, which supports the lid. I'm going to change smaller gouge. I want to get the tool rest in just a little bit. I'm going to stretch across the light bed. So I'm watching the battle first. Come back. I want to take a little bit of an undercut in where that lip is. Cross to the middle. 
have a feel again what's going on. Trying to get it nice and equal all the way down through. Getting a little bit thicker in the bottom still. This is so important, that touch, see what's going on. We've got a slight undercut here, we've got the lip, and we've got the outer step. So I think that's pretty good. I'll brise up again then. So 150. We'll sound that lip. We're going to roll the top. We'll take that sharp corner off as well. Good. Little line just in here where that lip is. So. Need to focus on that. Slight change of direction. Oh my gouge. Have a look, see if it's still there. Just didn't see it. So I've got high spot one and two. Oh, nice light cut. So. Well, no scraper. Nice and lightly. So I use the left hand in behind just to support it. That's better. Back to the abrasive just to sand that in. See what's going on. Uh, just blend the contour together now. Should be good. Let's have a quick look. Two, four. Like that little bead edge on here so we're softening the corner down is that lip but then our 400 Trying to sound right into where that step is. Have a quick look. A little bit of burnish. All right, good. So back to the cellulose sailor. Brush it on. Wipe off that excess. We're trying to make sure we get it right down that little groove, that little lip. 
Just going to give it quick friction dry. Let's move the abrasive off there. We need a little bit of paste wax. Uh, I said a little bit. Oh my God, what have I got? That? It's like got the biggest ton of paste wax I can find. This is a micro crystal wax. Right, give us a sec, step because this will be good because I need put that on there. And then we need to do some practical jokes or some conversation or something for a couple of minutes just to let the wax fall in. So, what have you got? Okay, so some people have said that they like um, your good tip so they don't have to use the indexing system. I think it was when you were marking up. Okay, so when I marked that, so very good. all we really used was the spacing between the chat gels yeah. with something that will fit in between. So I just used a piece of metal bar, my scooter, if you like. Let's turn it around, but now I have the sharp end of Okay, I can then literally use something along the lines, and this is to give me four locations. The tool rest. Yeah. Okay. So if I use the tool rest and I bring it down and I'm near enough, I can draw a pencil line off there. I've got four spacings and I'm working exactly the same position on quite easy to do. Okay. People are liking it. It's a good tip. Easy like way it. to do, wasn't it? Yeah. Definitely. And I mean, I will tell you, when we started and I looked at this the other week, it's like, how am I going to mark out four equally spaced little marks? Mm, okay. I've got four chapters. Can't we? Okay. Something you just thought of. Simple. Up. Okay. <laughs> right. um, Robert has asked, can okay. he convert his standard scraper yep. to a negative rake? What shape is it? Okay, because now my negative rake scraper I have, which is a little bit special. Again, we've done the sharpening thing on the video. This has a hollow grind right there with me. I just need to get my pencil. This is a weird hollow grind. Uh, there it fans out from the middle so it's actually coming outwards it's not just on the front um you can do what they would class as a negative rake scraper if you go online it looks a bit more like a skew chisel so you sharpen it from both sides to give you that effect this is slightly different because like i said this has a hollow grind in the top so i find it less aggressive but it's factory done for that and then i sharpen purely with diamond foul a few of you are going to say, how to sharpen it on the video that we've got in between Christmas and New Year? It is in there, okay? Because it's one of these regular questions I get. But basically, diamond fail. I do not go near a grinder too often with this, okay? So, in reality, yes, you can grind a normal scraper to make a negative rate, okay? Jim has just asked if you can sharpen your scraper. Okay. Uh, we're going to do it in the video as well. But my real nose, I know it happens. Twice. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's get myself comfortable somewhere. This is good. It's loud on the wax. And on here, we've got our round nose edge. We've got the hollow grind on the top. If I get a heavy bear on the top, and I'm sorry, I don't dance around with this. Now, we've got a five-degree drop or thereabouts. So I can move that card. I'm trying to get you a good position that you can see that credit card move about just a little bit. So it bounces on the bottom. Okay. All right. Good. So I can come across the middle. And I take a light bit off the top just to produce the shine line on the front to get rid of any heavy bear. Then the front is hollow ground down round here on a grinder. So for my diamond card, I push up round that curve. And that gives me a real sharp edge on the top. But with the hollow grind on the top, you've actually got a curve off the wheel and then the front cutting face. So this is coming up very slightly when you're using it to cut with. So you don't want to do doing too heavy with that diamond foil on that hollow on the top. Okay. But really working up that underside. The only time I go back to a grinder is when this starts to become quite flat across here. So I've got quite a flat producing top and bottom now, a little bit in the middle that's still hollow. Then I go back to the grinder. Put a new hollow in, diamond foil again. Okay. Let's just hang him back up. Common stuff, what have you got? So Cliff has asked, how do you decide on the grade of sharpening card to use? I use a red, which is a fine, okay? I don't want an extra fine. I'm going to be there all day. A course is too aggressive for that. So a fine is good. How do I decide? That's experience in reality. That's knowledge of playing around with diamond cards and knowing, right? The red one we use, which is the DMT, I think is a 600 micron, okay? So it has a, a thing on... So a quick uh, uh, DMT, 600 mesh, 25 microns, 600 mesh or something. Okay, so, but basically I would class with what they do as a fine, all right? 
Would if you say for a beginner, for somebody beginning, just if you're going to use it, for, if you're going to use so it's good. No, that's a good way of phrasing it. If you're going to use it to sharpen your turning tools, maybe something like a router cutter, go with fine. If you go too coarse, you're putting deeper scratch lines in, and it's more stock removal. Other thing that can be good for that, um, we get the diamond card lapping type fluid. A little bit of that's good, but that stops you clogging the card up. All right, or make it last longer. All right. Okay. All right. Done. Thank you. Perfect. Fantastic. My wax should go now. This is good. Look. <laughs> All right. So micro crystal wax we put on there. It needs a couple of minutes just to sink in. So buff that off. Wow. Get that a bit of a shine. So this is that blue paper towel we're doing. We could use a bit of wood shavings off the floor. But I could bend down again then. Okay, so that looks quite good. We've got our shine on the inside. Woo. Okay, right. Move things about a little bit. What do we need? We've got our bowl. Okay. We've got our button in a minute, hopefully. We started to get there. That will fit in. It might push in and out. We'll see. We've now got to reverse the base. Now, we could do this later. I'll be doing it later on this one. And the one I did for the rehearsal, okay? Nice straight side. That's got a little bit of a curve or a bit of taper inside here. So if I'd done it nice and straight, could have expanded on here. But I'll show you other ways of doing it. So the one I did, the ash one, I managed to actually hold on the outside edge of the jewels. We don't think about using that, so it could be good to do. The one I've got there, a little bit too much of a curve on the inside. It come, might come back and bite me in a minute, though. We'll find out. Uh-oh. So we're going to go to the button next, okay? Now, to do the button, we now need to do those four holes. And this is something, I'm just putting things on, getting a bit ready, all right, that I really had to think about to do. Um, I played around with this the other week on how can we make something with a button-shaped lid. Oh. But make it relatively simple. I started making things out of plywood and no, it, and I went making it too complicated. All right, so the button box is called a button box because we're going to use button jaws to make it. It's not because it's got a button shaped lid. Okay, so well, it, okay, it is really, but it's both. Okay, so on here I have set up the buttons so I can offset them. I'm hoping you can see that probably best on two stuff, actually, just as a quick look. I've got these two, that there, that gives you my limp. Okay, so my button will actually fit into there. I can move things off center, all right? Now, I've already set these up so I know it works. I've got another thing to put in here yet. This actually, if I look at where I am and where am I on the, on the holes, okay? So I've got the small button jaws. I'm on the center hole, first look. And then third one in for the size. That moves me off centre by about 25 mil. Okay, or 20 mil it was. Okay. Now to make sure I don't damage anything in here, I put a piece of hardboard, thin piece of plywood or something. It's about four mil thick. Then our button. Okay. Now, on your button jaws, there's the screw on the top face. I stretch and get the pencil. There it is. Uh, yeah, okay, you can just see it there. Okay, stuff's kind of nodding. You've also got the slot that we haven't got a use for yet. We're thinking about it. But if I go to the center of the screw, I can line up that index point that we drew with the masking tape to the center of that screw. We've got to take the tail stock center out. We've got a 20 millimeter sawtooth type forstner. Okay. Going to bring it up, bring that back, check the drill shot tail just a little bit too far. Live speed needs to come down. This is slightly bigger, and we don't need a lot of speed for this. Up off to there. We can drill a hole. When do you know you've gone all the way through? You'll feel the hardboard. Let's have a quick look. Okay. Think so. Okay. Get my drill chuck to secure. We need a little bit of a brazier up at this stage. Go careful with that drill chuck where you are. 150. 
240. And all we're doing here is softening that corner. Nothing more. Okay. One done. Done. That's your hole. Undo. Turn it round. Line up your pencil line with the middle of the screw. Tighten up. And the drill back in. Lock off. Start. What a horrible noise. Okay. Two for that one. Again, we're just taking that sharp front edge off with the 150. 240. 400. And do. Bring it round. Pencil line, middle of the screw. That's simple. I'll tell you something, if you'd seen the other idea they had of trying to make up high with holders that you're going to have to, no. Uh, so, Kim, just supporting the drill bit as we go in. Come through, I can just feel that. Okay, bring it back. I'll stop the live at that point because it makes such a high pitched screech noise. And two. That's the third one. And do last one to do. All right, so we've got to bring, got to come round to there. Oh, undo that one there. Should be right if we're there. Middle of the pencil line to the middle of the screw, which is the highest screw on the button jaws. I'll put the chucky down there. I won't find it. Bring it up. You lose our drill chuck. Less things to catch your arm on. That's the four. That's the two four. Quick look. Okay. Now, remember, think when I did this, that's all right. You've done the front. Put a bit at the back. Now, like we said, the bit of hardball protects your chuck jaws. We can easily turn this over. I've got the wrong jaw facing me. I want to be around there, really. And I can line that up central approximately enough. We can sand that. One. Round. There. Uh, Oh, a little bit off. Not quite essential, but if I take the live speed down, and don't push too hard on my finger, it'll follow the contour of that hole. All we're really trying to do is soften the corner. Oh, I could have stopped the live and moved that about, can I? So, all right, we've got two more to do. Oh, twist it a little bit more. Need to undo it a bit. Again, this is just about really cleaning the back of those up. Have a good thing you could do, uh, get a masking tape on the back before you drill them, just to support stuff, but it will bind on the drill chuck or the drill bit when it comes through. Last one, right around there. Bring it up. So we do all four. Okay, good. This point, let's move our, our tape. So you can see how we've used that pencil line in reality with the bolt up on here. We've got the jaws moved about. Simple way of indexing, made that nice and easy to do your four holes. Drill them on the button jaws, you're getting the same accuracy because everything's off center the same point. Okay, a little bit there. Okay, good. Now, thing we need to do now, if I'd got my C-jaw thing right, it would have been good. 
ฉันได้แล้วมันเกิดอะไรแล้วอันบริสุทธิ์ฟุ้ยก็ So a couple of people have asked, have said that they would probably drill the holes on a pillar drill. I can do it that way. Um, you could do if you think about it, if you do it with your pillar drill, could you put a line on the table where you lay that down? So you've got a, a reposition point. You still do the four marks on using the masking tape on the edge of the button. Yeah. Okay. And then you could have a mark on the table that you could bring. Those up to and a stop point against the fence, if you like, is the best way you can describe that. So yeah, you could do it that one. Um, a pellet drill? What's that? I don't know. I want to know a pellet drill. I mean, no, so do I. moving the buttons about <laughs> now, just to see if we can get into there. And I've got four in at the moment, but if you look at where they're gripping, probably not bad. Let's have a quick look. See what happens. Okay, not too bad. Just checking it's not pushing up too much. In reality, I'm trying to be a bit lazy. Okay, what am I trying to do? Just first of all, checking we have the buttons in the right location. Let's move the others now. Check we gripped. Follow our line round. Okay, one there. And uh, and, uh, I considered earlier having two sets of button jaws set up in case this problem happened, but that just seemed a bit extravagant. Now we're going to move these down. We know we're on the right circumference now. That one there. Good. Now we'll grip it all the way around. That's better. Stop. Fuller said, "Doesn't have a drill press. It's one of the three desert island power tools." The what? Sorry. One of the three desert island power tools. Really? A drill press, apparently so. I think you'd be de definitely taking a lathe. <laughs> okay, so we've got our button just set. Put one button out. That'll be okay. We can manage with that. I should have checked that recess bit we did earlier. Ooh, a bit low on my tour rest now. Got to come up fractionally. What we're trying to do now is send that cut into our bowl. Blended it in. We want to take a little bit off the bottom. Straight and flat. Again, nice and controlled. What have I got there? Slight change of direction. Oh. Didn't produce a bear on my skew chisel, so quickly done, diamond file. That's off. Just to blend that together. Some sheer spike in there. That's good. Now I want some air. So I'll go to the extractor. We're on 150. Quick check, see what's happening. That looks good. 240. Four hundred. Okay. Our cellulose. Not that off. Our button. Need to check a tiny bit of tape on there. I don't know. A little bit on there. 
what I can do, I'll send a little sailor on here. Be a bit extravagant with that, throw it on, look, okay, down the holes, that's good. The tissues, the other pocket, you should know by now, a brazier paper's right hand, paper towel's left. That's what pockets are for. That would be an interesting comment I could throw to the guys. What have you ever found in your smock that you'd lost and found a couple of years later or something? You know, that's like... Best thing I ever found was a smock that I was lent in the States. It had $50 in the pocket. And no, I gave, I gave it back, I promise. So I had a $50 note. Okay, so... Got to finish just buffing this now. So let's lock our spindle. Play that off. Just going to drop that down. I think stuff's got another question. Is that give us a second stop and then we'll get there. lid on the jam jar because it smells. I know it smells all right, but right. Okay, what have you got? So Robert has asked, have you ever turned anything with a pewter inlay? Turned anything with a pewter inlay? No, not yet. I'm going to think about it. I've looked at We did a, an epoxy inlay a while back where we did black line, but it's never done like a pewter or anything. That could be a, Maybe can could be an there. idea. Okay, that could be something interesting. We'll add it to the list. Uh-oh. I know you've got staff involved. You know, <laughs> we have a weekly meeting on this sort of thing. What can we do as video? So now I'm going to end up with a box or a pewter inlay somewhere. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Right, okay. All right, anything else? All right, one minute. Okay. Right, okay. So we put the polishing muck harbour on the light. Stitch muck. We've got that beautiful finish on the inside. We need something on the outside. So the brown note, we're going to go with a brown compound. I've turned the bowl upside down, so I'm coming away from the rim. That's something you're going to catch if you're not careful. And we work up it. Across the bottom of it. I can come round that way as long as I don't present that square corner. Now, to the edge, I've come up onto there. Not down here. Almost like using two cogs coming together. One. The lid, or the button, is a lighter coloured bit of oak. I'm going to try and keep that lightness. So I'm going to go white compound. A buff. We can do under the little bit more speed. Maximum about 1800 though. You'll burn the work. And I mean burn it by putting a mark on it. We do the edge. Get across. Feel what's going on, this a bit there. So what my feeling where the cellulose sealer is, or maybe my mask and tape still is. Oh, one of the two. We'll get rid of it. Right, okay. Then Oh, spin that off. We want the loose mop, which is right down there. Put that on. Twist it up. A little bit of carnauba wax. A little bit more speed. That's better. So this is a soft mop. Softer cotton. Buff if I'm careful because the mop's down inside of it. I can just pull the wax over on the inside. I need to be really careful with it. Let's get rid of the sealer on the light bud. A little splodge. I nearly put the bowl on it. Would have would have been marked again. Nothing bad. So we can do all our button. Got a bit of shine. Bring part of the lid into the Okay, so that fits quite nice. Goes in, we can pull it in and out. Gives you something as a little bit of a thing. So let's move that about. Something is quite a fun little project in reality, aren't they? There, you know, okay, let's swing it up a little bit. So we go a bit. I'll sit in it out. I love the two tone color of this. I love that shape of a button. I like to say it's interesting ideas. Could you use it as a pulpori bowl? I hadn't thought of that. That'd be quite nice. And I love the idea with the pink pin cushion. A bit of foam, a bit of cloth, maybe stitched over it. You can put your pins down for it. I, re I reckon you can use it as both. To have the buttons in the bottom, spare buttons, because I never know where to put my spare buttons. Interesting. And I then, know, a potpourri bowl with <laughs> a smelling pin cushion. 
Why not? We could copyright this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, hopefully. Let's have a look. Hope you guys you've enjoyed. Giving you a few ideas. You got any more questions, stuff, anything else come through? Nothing there? I'm okay for now. All Thank right. you. They've either, I've either entertained them or I've bored them to death totally. Okay. Something is a, a little bit of a different project. I hope you enjoyed, like I said. You can give us a thumbs up and all that stuff. I'll have a read for the comments tomorrow and see if I missed anything. Um, I like the idea of the future thing. We have a play with that. I've never tried doing that. I've got some, actually got some, I think, aluminium or aluminium powder, all right, depending on where you're from. Um, we'll do some epoxy. That will give us a false one. But we ought to do some future stuff. That might be interesting. Next thing, have a great Christmas. I've got nothing else before Christmas. Ben will be back in on Thursday. So have a great Christmas. And we will see you when we get back in in the new year to do another live. Okay. So enjoy yourselves. Go careful. Goodbye. <laughs>